Welcome back to the Tech Talks Daily Podcast. Now, today I have Matt Andrew, UK Managing Director and Partner at Equimetrix, which is a global data science consultancy helping brands improve their marketing performance, understanding of their customers, and their operational excellence, all through analytics and data science. And I want to try and demystify some of that world today. And the, and the companies work with some pretty big names, and I'll drop a few of them here. Google and Meta, they work with them on solutions like MMO, and have also helped clients make more confident decisions through their work. So we're going to talk about all that, and also the potential of emerging technologies, such as Metaverse, Web3, and artificial intelligence. And also what that means for the true potential of digital as an integral part of marketing. So we'll explore that, MarTech, and much more. So buckle up and hold on tight because I'm going to beam your ears all the way to the UK where you can sit down with me and Matt Andrew from Echometrics. So a massive warm welcome to the show, Matt. Can you tell the listeners a little about who you are and what you do? Yeah, of course. So I'm Matt Andrew. I'm the general manager and partner at Echometrics in the UK. Uh, we're a data science solutions business where we really work with clients across a range of industries from retail, financial services, consumer healthcare, etc., in helping get value from their data and steer business decisions with the use of data science. There's a lot to unpack there. So we're going from uh, yep. data solutions, business uh, technology, etc. So I'd, I'd love to find out more about how you got here. So what's your origin story? Where did that passion for technology and improving businesses come from? How did they collide? And what is that origin story? Is there, yeah. is there anything you can share around that? No, I've been a geek for a long time, right? Yeah. So that's, <laughs> that's definitely, where, definitely where I come from. I, I started doing computer science uh, at Cambridge, so, so my my degree um and of all the places it took me i went into fmcg so uh for selling selling toothpaste mouthwash and shower gel at colgate palmolive um really um managing brands thinking about how the use of data can drive decisions in in brand management and basically the growth of a the growth of a company um through that, I had a lot of opportunity to work with data uh, to bring it to life across the business because you know there's, there's many people that aren't comfortable with data, aren't comfortable with using data, and ultimately many decisions can be kind of human-led rather than data data inspired. Uh, and just bringing data more uh, more to the table across the board was was something I really enjoyed in in that environment. Um, and then through that, I I, I met some. Uh, kind of external consultants that were supporting us that that uh, led to the, this opportunity with um, Clive Humby and Edwina Dunn, uh, who were the founders of Dunn Humby, which is the, the business that drives uh, kind of the Tesco club card analytics and a few other retail partners around the world. They'd uh, kind of exited, sold to Tesco, and, and were setting up a, a new business using social media data to kind of understand customers in more detail. So I had a lot of opportunity to work with Clive. Um, for, for some time, that's where I built a lot of my data science kind of core skill set uh, in that really experimental, innovative environment using social media and uh, data. And then Ecumetrics really came along as a as a chance to take kind of a step up into like a scaling business um, and and really kind of bridge both the marketing, uh, the brand management aspect of of my time at Colgate Palmolive with some fundamental data science skill sets and and into a really quickly growing team uh, where I could kind of own something and really feel the the impact of my own contribution. And I'm curious, if you look back throughout your career, have you seen attitudes change from that loudest voice in the meeting room calling the shots to more data-informed, data-driven uh, responses? Is yeah, I mean, completely. Yeah. yeah, completely. I think, uh, you know, that it was, I mean, 10 years ago, there weren't many CEOs that were talking about the role of data on analytics in terms of with their boards and like to the market and driving decisions. Um, and I mean, the last week I was with the CEO of a luxury fashion company and central to their strategy and central to what the CEO is talking about as his priority is the use of data and analytics to make better decisions in in the business. So the, the understanding of the role that like this availability of data and the the mining of that data for insight and the ability to take decisions from that can play in driving business results is really well understood. I think what's still 
happening is like how to really bring that to life for a business as a whole and like how to make it not just the preserve of a few experts in a, in a, in a business and, you know, trying to convince people or convince stakeholders that are not as data aware or understand data as much who ultimately have the business decision to try and convince them, but really how you bring that culture of understanding and of the impact that data can have and where everyone sees that and everyone is collaborating to get the best out of that uh, situation. And then ultimately it's not about data taking the decisions. It's about data enabling people with like uh, more informed, more informed decisions and, and relying less on gut feel, but more about having data points, proof points and, and things that can help them challenge their own thinking and perspective. 100%. It's so, so refreshing to hear you say that as well. And of course, your path would lead you to Ecumetrics, which is a, a data science consultancy that helps brands improve their marketing performance by understanding their customers. So can you tell me more about the story behind the company and, and some of those problems that you set out to solve with your tech and data science? Yeah. And I think in the space, we've been around for a relatively long time. Uh, so we've we've been operating for 16 years um, yeah. and, and really you can kind of track the growth of Ecumetrics alongside a Google Trends search for data science as, t- as a term itself. And and really, 16 years ago, no one talked about data science and, and marketing science was a really new a new concept. Um, so our, our founders came uh, from France out of a mix of like uh, brand side, uh, media agency side, and just, again, seeing the role and the impact that data could play. Um, but feeling it was really underexplored. Uh, and so just wanting to create this environment where real uh, kind of experts in the use of data, um, but who wanted it to be applied for business, not just for the technical side of an algorithm or for thinking about like how you can make something really complex, but really thinking about what's the business outcome you're trying to drive. And that's always been at the heart of what we do, Eki, is... Um, you know, we'll, we'll, if there's a simple way to get to the business outcome that we're looking to achieve, then we'll take the simple way rather than the really complex way that uh, might be like academically interesting and, and get you there, but ultimately makes it harder for the people that need to trust and have confidence in your models and your algorithms and approaches. They need to have the confidence and trust in, in what you're doing so that they can take a business decision from that. And, and that's still kind of the heart and the DNA of, of what we do now. Um, we're just over 400 people uh, in uh, New York, London, Paris, and Hong Kong. So, uh, yeah, global global business, global team. Um, and from from that kind of small beginning in in Paris, um, we yeah have worked with some of the biggest brands across uh, a number of a number of sectors, uh, like really strong partners. Um, and it's it's just a great environment for people to come on board um, and see how you can take a technical skill set and, and really make an impact from that um, uh, for, for, for business or for, uh, for a growing case around sustainability charities and just for positive um, positive impact in society as well. And I must admit, before you came on the podcast, I found myself wondering how you got your name. And I, yeah. I, I read the um, Echo, I can't even say it, Economic, uh, Echo, Econometrics. <laughs> Econometrics is the basis at which uh, Eki then uses triangulated methods such as marketing mix optimization. So can you expand on, on what that is just to ensure that brands are making consistent uh, decisions out there? Yeah, so one of, I mean, one of my big focuses is is in our marketing science practice, uh, which is where we're helping uh, brand owners, uh, people that are spending marketing dollars, marketing euros, pounds, etc., um, to make better use of that that money to understand the return it's getting them uh, as a business. And so, econometrics is just a form of uh, kind of statistics where you're looking at um, how that pattern of spend over time across different channels, like whether it's different media channels from from TV, offline, like radio, out of home, into new digital channels, uh, like any TikTok spend or sponsorship you might have, um, alongside things like changes to price, promotions that you might have, new product launches, et cetera, how that's all kind of in the mix coming together to drive a business result and and with that understanding to start saying okay what are the things that you could be doing differently to drive a better outcome uh, from that so really trying to make every everything that you're doing work better for more sustainable growth uh, for, for brands going forward 
Before you came on the podcast when I was doing the research, I also read that uh, Acumetrics has worked with Google and Meta on solutions like MMO, helping clients make more confident decisions. I'm not sure how much of this you're going to be able to talk about, but yeah. you can share around that. Yeah, no, I mean, we've we've uh, we've really, really recently released a, a white paper, like a research paper with Meta, um, yeah. where we've been using computer vision. So, so bringing together like AI methods like computer vision uh, with um, our kind of marketing science approaches to start answering more complex questions like how do you understand the performance of uh, creative in uh, in in marketing outcomes? And it used to be an easy question where you d- you had a TV ad and that was kind of the main thing that everyone everyone saw. And maybe you have one or two TV ads a year and you can kind of do a lot of consumer testing and, and things like that to understand performance. But in, in the digital space and with more like automated methods to um, creating ad- ads, there's, there's become hundreds and thousands of different creatives that any individual brand is playing at any one time. And so that research was really around how can you bridge AI methods with marketing science to understand how um, creative is creative aspects um, are driving different driving uh, performance of your your marketing campaigns. So that's 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 one way. Um, but otherwise, it's helping you know these newer platforms. And it's not just Google and Meta, but you know there's there's many new platforms, Snapchat, and TikTok, etc. They you know this, they very quickly come on board, very quickly gain massive audiences. And they want to help the brands that spend money with them to understand what what's actually driving performance. And so a lot of the work we're doing is about how can you work with those platforms and how can you understand the performance of those platforms so that you can use them in a better way and you can feel confident about the, uh, the budget you're putting behind them. So as we're talking about Meta, a question I've got to ask is, is what kind of potential do you see with emerging technologies? And by that, I mean things like the Metaverse, uh, Web3 and and artificial intelligence, etc. Do you see anything excites you around that? Yeah, I think. I mean, there's a there's a huge amount of potential change coming uh, in in many different uh, in many different ways. So uh, you know, AI. Ch- I mean, Chat GPT is like a massive talking point at the moment, yeah. and we have a lot of clients saying, "Okay, how can we how can we start thinking about using this?" Um, and you know, what potential impact can it have for us? So that change is always going to be present and. You know that that pace, the the pace of change and the pace of kind of understanding of what these new technologies are, are bringing to the table is only accelerating uh, and, and more and more. I think things like the metaverse is definitely an opportunity for marketers to kind of keep an eye out to understand in in a bit more detail, like how they can take those first steps into the market um, with any new technology. It's just about understanding that pace of adoption and. The confidence that you can have to really go full throttle in that and for something like the metaverse where you know it's more of a let's say slow burns kind of potential in terms yeah. of how quickly it's going uh you know unless you have a really specific metaverse business model then it's more like try some tested learns you know think about how to with some limited resource potentially think about doing uh doing something there and then on the other side with with things like you know, Web 3.0, uh, there have been great opportunities for brands uh, to just engage with a new audience who are really kind of tech savvy, really passionate about this space. And, you know, there's there's some great examples of like Levi's with the 501 NFT, um, where, you, you know, you could you could uh, buy this NFT and it would give you 501s for life, right? So they had three of them. Uh, and that NFT just means that you can go to a Levi's shop, you can get your 501s and basically as they break down over time, you can go and go and get a new one. Just a great way to kind of start testing new new methods to engage with, with audiences. Um, but at the moment, it's more, how do you test them and how do you understand, how do you understand where the performance might come? Because uh, there's, there's not many of those new technologies yet where they have the scale to really transform some of the big businesses that, that uh, we're working with and, and uh, where they have really big global scale and, and very firm kind of business models that are driving the revenue for them at the end of the day. And if we zoom out for a moment, can I also ask you to expand on the, the true potential of all things digital, especially as a, an integral part of marketing? Because the, 
th there's no hiding the fact now that the technology dominates this space, doesn't it? And it's going to continue to do so. No, for sure. And you know, in in the marketing world where kind of I'm most comfortable playing in, it's uh, media fragmentation is like a is a massive thing that is is undergoing at the moment. So, you know, when TikTok launched, it was the you know the quickest ever platform to get to a billion users, right? In terms of how just how quick the adoption of these new platforms is becoming, and they're they're digital. There's a huge number of them. Um, and the ability to understand their performance is, er is being eroded as well because of uh, really important privacy initiatives to make people like more secure and in, in, like make individuals more secure in you know how they navigate navigate the web. But it's like eroding the understanding that marketers can have around where different audiences sit across those different platforms. And so, you know, digital is driving, uh, and digital will be the kind of e driver to get to. Uh, audiences to uh, present them your product your offer uh, to to kind of have them consider uh, consider to to purchase but the way that you kind of understand what's working for you and what's not is really changing very rapidly because of that fragmentation and because of the the privacy and the data uh, the data deprecation like cookies disappearing uh, that's changing the methods that you need to use to to understand that performance and that kind of understanding is something that's filtering filtering through the whole kind of marketing ecosystem at the moment and the technology and approaches that you need to use to to actually get signals in this in this new in the new world um, is is becoming more and more well understood and i think another big trend this year is we're seeing the rise of the socially conscious consumer who will determine who and where they shop depending on their uh, their environmental responsibilities or how seriously take them. And they're also very quick to call out uh, any greenwashing from brands that exaggerate their claims. So I'm curious, as a as a business, where does sustainability fit, fit within your agenda this year? Yeah, well, I mean, what's really important for Ecumetrics and what we want to help our clients to do is that it's really about embracing the power of AI and data science to drive the transformation towards sustainability. And like we, we we firmly believe that the businesses that are successful over the next five, 10, 15 years will have at their heart uh, sustainability and uh, managing, controlling, and limiting the impacts that they have on planetary resources, the planetary boundaries that that we need to operate under. Um, there's definitely a significant kind of say do gap between yeah. kind of the corporate intent and actually what what is what's happening and the, the action to meet those meaningful goals. Um, and we we really think that data science can tackle that in a way that you know uh, traditional kind of bottom up accounting practices aren't necessarily able to to handle. Um, so we think data science in terms of the ability to estimate at scale. Uh, kind of carbon, carbon carbon emissions and your sustainability sustainability impacts as a business, then to very quickly get you on the track to saying how can you redirect parts of your investment, parts of your business model, parts of your marketing, uh, etc., to help you manage your own goals and to get to a more sustainable uh, operating environment is is a is a really critical part of the success that many businesses are going to have uh, over the next five years, um, and it's those businesses that really close the gap between what they say they want to do and what they're actually doing. Um, they're the ones that that will be trusted and, and will be successful in the future. And of course, we're talking at the moment at a period of a lot of economic uncertainty. And the reason I bring this up was when I was doing a bit of research on you guys, I, I also learned that Ecumetrics UK team grew by 60% last year. And you also have over 400 data scientists worldwide. So can you tell me more about the ongoing development and expansion of your data science transformation, customer centricity and MMO solutions, and how essentially it's helping some brands with holistic measurement globally at scale. They always say you can only improve what you measure. And there'll be a lot of businesses knowing what they need to do, but find the whole process a little bit daunting, maybe even overwhelming. So can, can you expand on this and how you're helping businesses? Yeah, of course. So a, a lot of the a lot of the uh, growth in, in our team has come from an increasing diversity of the different types of profiles that we have. And the value chain for data is is quite broad from just getting access to data at the beginning to making sure it's clean to understanding how you can get, get access to it at scale in a more automated way through to actually uh, the analytics and the insights itself and then 
how you communicate and translate that uh, for business stakeholders um, or other stakeholders to to drive uh, an action or, or to to drive change. Um, and so a lot of that growth is in uh, uh, things like data engineering, data architecture, uh, starting to get into more advanced topics like machine learning operations. So how you make like a, how you make a machine learning model live in practice and make sure that it's actually still performing two years down the line uh, in the same way that it performs when you first set it up. And that's really about a switch and a transition, which we're seeing in, in many of the data science kind of cases from uh, looking for service and support to just deliver something to actually clients wanting to own their own capabilities to stand them up. Um, and that's really where uh, we've been focused in the last few years is, is changing our model and changing our approach to make sure that we're much more helping clients build their own capabilities, supporting the acceleration of that, of, of setting something new up, and then making sure that they can take ownership of it and supporting them with their own upskilling, their own talent acquisition, um, and making sure they've got the right teams in place to really run advanced analytics, data science, machine learning approaches at scale. And I think we are at a time as well where there's lots of brands and business leaders, they, they listen to podcasts like this to try and get a better idea of how to move forward and learn from the experiences of others and avoid making mistakes by learning from those mistakes of others. And I, I hear you've got your own podcast as well at Echometrics where you uh, speak with clients, etc. So can you tell me a little bit more about that podcast and, and what people can expect from that? Yeah, for sure. No, we've, we try and do it as regularly as we can not as regularly as you do for sure <laughs> it's a bit it's a bit it's a bit um it's a bit harder to balance sometimes with yeah. the, with that but yeah no um we speak with some of our clients with some of our partners uh just about their challenges uh what their focuses are you know we've we've had people from from meta from youtube um some of our clients as well uh kind of on on board um talking about the challenges that they've faced around marketing science, around customer analytics, understanding customers, uh, like digital media ecosystem, um, how to think about in-housing capabilities and some of the challenges that uh, that brands have faced on that journey as well. Um, so yeah, it's 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 kind of any topic within that data science space uh, that we we look to we look to cover with that. And you can yeah you can search Acumetrics uh, on any any podcast platform and that uh, will pretty likely to come up not many not many not many competitors for the Echometrics name in the in the space love it and we started the podcast talking about your origin story what put you on this path and as we come full circle i'm going to ask you to reflect and look back for a moment none of us are, are able to get any kind of a success without a little help along the way so i'm curious is there a particular person you're grateful towards maybe they helped you get where you are maybe they just invested a, a little time in you but who would they be and, and and why? Is there anything you can share around that? Yeah, I think, you know, I'm I'm in a really privileged position of like leading the team that we have in the UK and, you know, uh being kind of one of the global custodians of, of Eki and, you know, the four hundred people that we have around the world. So um that you I I really believe that you only get to those types of positions with you know, definitely kind of effort. <laughs> you know, it's a, it's a lot of work to get there, but the trust and support of, of people along the way. Um, you know, especially one of the founders of Eki of, of Ecumetrics, Content Michard, like taking me on board at the beginning and, you know, really that transition from being an employee in in a in a team to really a business owner and an entrepreneur um is something that that Contan has really supported me through through the last seven years of been at been at Ecumetrics. and uh, i think without his involvement in that i'd probably be looking or might be in a very different position right now as well so uh, yeah i think finding those those mentors finding those people that are willing to put trust and faith in you and, and kind of following through on that is uh is one of the ways that you can really start to grow and accelerate and, and finding those people and and uh listening to them and showing that that trust can be well placed is i think i think a really critical part of my own path yeah it really is and for anyone listening that just wants to find out more information about all things ecumetrics anything we talked about today maybe even contact your team if they've got any additional questions what's the best starting point for everything 
Yeah, we've got our website uh, at ecumetrics.com um, or anyone's always, I'm always more than welcome uh, to chat to people through LinkedIn. Uh, if you just search Matt Andrew, then uh, I don't think, again, there aren't too many Matt Andrews that come up when you, when you, when you search for LinkedIn. So uh, yeah, really happy to to have uh, have connections through there as well. Well, I just love everything that you're doing here. Great to hear success stories, how you've worked with Google and Meta on solutions like MMO and helping clients make confident decisions. And at a time of economic uncertainty, it's also great to hear how you've grown your team 60% in the last year and over 400 data scientists worldwide. Love what you're doing. Love to stay in touch and see how things go for you this year. Maybe get you on later in the year or early next year. But just thanks for sharing your story today. No, thanks so much for having me on as well, Neil. Thank you. A big thank you to Matt for not only coming on the podcast today, for also his patience, because I did have to cancel last minute the recording because I had some work that I needed to do um, in London and uh, he was very gracious and we rescheduled and made sure we got this out as quickly as possible. So Matt, if you are listening back, a big thank you for your patience there. And it's wonderful to hear this success story at Echometrics and how they're booking the trend with so much growth and uh, transforming of businesses there and helping brands. And I'm going to be following their story very closely. And if you've got a story you'd like to share with me, remember, email me, techblogwriteroutlook.com. I've already got another guest lined up for tomorrow, uh, so please join me again then to listen to that. And if you'd like to uh, have a conversation with me, again, email me, techblogwriteroutlook.com. But that's it for today. So thank you for listening as always. And until next time, don't be a stranger. Oh, 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 oh,